In the middle of 2023, Google changed uh, their Google Analytics platform from what used to be called Universal Analytics over to what's become known as GA4 or version 4 of Google Analytics. Um, it's quite different from the old one, and I kind of get the feeling that it's more tailored towards larger enterprises and corporates rather than small businesses. It's, it's way more complicated than it needs to be. So instead I found this alternative called a Matomo Analytics and rather than running separately on a separate server, it actually installs right inside your WordPress website. And the beauty of that is you don't need a separate login to go and have a look at your website stats. It's right there inside of WordPress. So what I thought I'd do today is we'll just have a really quick walkthrough at the key things you might want to look at and where to find it. G'day, I'm Jason Foss. Uh, let's get into it right away. So from your WordPress dashboard, down on the left-hand side here, you'll see it, Matomo Analytics. So if you just click that, that will load up um, a bit of a, some overview uh, info on the screen there. So you can change your date range, you know, from today, yesterday, last week, this week, last month, you know, whatever sort of basic time frame you want to look at. Um, and from here, there's a fair bit of information here, but only some of it's probably terribly useful. So first of all, you've got your trend over time here, uh, which might be a bit more meaningful after the thing's been installed for longer, but because this is only relatively new, that's not overly helpful. Uh, but the visit summary box over on the right hand side here might be. Um, first of all, I'd probably not pay too much attention to unique visitors um, in this multi-device world between flipping between your phone and your laptop and an iPad. Um, I'm not overly confident that those numbers are particularly accurate, that they are truly unique. So just look at visits. So we can see here that this month, 205 visits and 614 actions. Now an action is something that somebody does when they visit your site. They go to a page, they click a link and go to a different page, they download something, they type something in a search box and hit search if you've got a search box on your website. Um, they click a link and go to your Facebook page or they click a link and go to your Insta Instagram account. They've done something on your site. Generally that falls into the bucket called actions. So you've got maximum actions in one visit, an average per visit. Um, average visit duration, that's the average time they've spent on your site. Um, these three numbers probably don't really mean anything unless you see a trend moving um, drastically one way or the other. Uh, and a bounce rate. So a bounce is a one page visit. Somebody comes to your website, looks at one page and then leaves. Uh, now obviously you want to keep that as low as possible, but uh, a high bounce rate or a low bounce rate in isolation is neither good nor bad necessarily depending on other circumstances. I won't spend a lot of time on that now, but for example, if you find that you get a lot of your website traffic coming via Facebook, for example, a pretty common behavior is you scroll through Facebook, you click a link, you look at the page that that link was on, whether it be an article or a blog post or something, and you go, huh, and then you hit the back button and keep scrolling through Facebook. So you've just generated a bounce, but you've got somebody to your website if that was your goal. So uh, typically about a third is kind of normal, but these bounce rates can be higher or lower for a number of factors. Um, coming down here, we've got uh, country of origin of the visitor, um, some main breakdown of what those actions were we were talking about before. Uh, goal conversions, if we're, if we're tracking goals, um, they'll be listed here. This is one to keep an eye on, your device type. So um, is the split mostly phone or mostly de desktop or about even? And you want to look at these numbers to determine um, where you should be paying attention to your user experience in your design. So everything's kind of a compromise when you build a website. Is it better for the desktop? Is it better for mobile? There's always some trade-offs in there. So if you've got mostly phone visitors to your website, make sure you actually pull out your phone and have a look at your phone, have a look at your phone, have a look at your website on your phone because that's the way most people are seeing it. Uh, scrolling down, operating system, screen resolution, there's some other stuff here that is a bit nerdy and doesn't really matter too much. But down here, page titles. So this is uh, how popular each page is. You'd expect your home page to be at the top of the list. But have a look down, are there are other pages there that are getting traffic that surprises you, or there are pages that you think that should get traffic that aren't. Um, that's worth just a, a quick review. This one here is entry page title, so this is the first page of somebody's visit. Often it's your home page, but not always. And then down here, your exit page title, so this is the last page that somebody looked at 
before they um, closed the tab or, or moved on or did whatever they did. Now your all channels here, this is where your website traffic is actually coming from. So where you see keyword not defined, they've basically come from, from Google pretty much, that's search traffic. Uh, but then there'll be some other sources as well, and they could be social networks, they could be other websites. Where is your traffic coming from? Um, if you're running any campaigns, they will show up there. Your outbound links, links off to social networks. And if you have um, an online store set up, you'll have some basic e-commerce uh, e transaction summary details down there. So there's a few things that you want to pay attention to on this screen. I tend to look at your visit summary, uh, your desktop mobile split, um, and possibly your page titles, and anything else there will depend on uh, your use case and what you're actually monitoring and look to improve. But this is just a summary, and if you click um, here, you can see a view full reporting. You'll be presented with a dashboard that looks a bit like this. Um, now, I'm not going to go through all of the nuts and bolts of everything that's in here in this video, but if you feel like exploring, you can click any of these um, things on the side here and get a breakdown in terms of some more details um, if that's what you're interested in having a look at. And to get back, you've got your WordPress admin link there. And that will take you to back to your dashboard. So that's just a really quick overview of um, where to find your Matomo analytics data, um, a couple of key things to look at. Um, and uh, if there is demand, leave a comment uh, below if you're interested. I can do a bit more of a detailed breakdown about some of these other reports uh, if you wish. That is all for today. Thanks for watching. We will see you later. You made it to the end. Well done. There will be a link around here with a subscribe button, which you probably should do. The like button will be down there if you found this useful. And don't forget to watch one of these other videos as well while you're here, because uh, that all helps with the algorithm, apparently. Alrighty. Thanks again. See ya.